let's take a very quick look to how to render something in Octane for Lightwave. The very first thing we have to do is to switch to Octane Render. And now we can open the IPR window. So now the objects are transferred in the GPU memory. And we can finally see how Octane is rendering uh, the objects. Even we, if we have a, a light wave uh, light in the scene, that can't be used by Octane. We need to convert this light into an Octane light. So now we have created a quad light, which is just like our array light. And let's reload the scene. So now Octane IPR is also aware of the light. So let's click on Open Editor and here we can find the Octane render target. The render target node editor is the heart of Octane for lightweight render settings. Inside uh, its root node you can link the five nodes that configure the scene settings. The camera, environment, imager, kernel, and post-processing. In this editor, user also can configure uh, the plugin render settings like instancing or surface override. So let's start choosing which kind of kernel we're going to use uh, for rendering. Let's select dark lighting, connect it, and open the options. You can define number of max samples to calculate for the final render. The GI type now is set to ambient occlusion, but we can change it to diffuse, so we get a pure Monte Carlo solution. Let's change the diffuse specular and glossy depth to, let's go for 888, okay. And let's adjust the light position. Okay. We still have to assign octane materials to our object, so um, let's do that. Octane can read some parameters from the surface editor, so parameters like the color or a diffuse. The specularity. But uh, my advice is to define uh, novel materials. So let's start with the ground. Let's make a slightly reflective ground. So let's click on Octane Glossy Material to add this material. And let's connect it. So the diffuse color, we can change it to something a little less brighter. Okay. And we can control, of course, the specular value. And the roughness. So if we set it at zero, we have a mirror-like reflection. If we want blurry reflections, we're going to use some higher value, like 20% or let's make 5%. Okay. So let's assign a material, an obtain material to this object. Let's close another editor and click on this surface and on added nodes. Let's add a diffuse material and connect it to the material input here. We can change the diffuse color. We can even change the transmission. This is 
a parameter that lets you have an object act as a light emitter. So this is a very simple material. Uh, let's try the glossy material, which we can use to simulate plastic or metals. So here we have a diffuse color and a specular color, which can be really high. or less intense. We can control the surface blurriness using the roughness value. So setting it at zero will give us this kind of very sharp specular reflection while going towards 100 will give us very blurry reflections. say to something like 15 percent. Let's see how we can change the background color. We can again open the editor and add for example the environment daylight node and connect it to environment. So now we can control the hour of the day we want to use. We can even turn off the light, send the power to something really, really small. And try, you know, several hours in the day, evening, full night. We can, uh, of course, set the power to zero if we want to have a black background in this case. And I'm going to turn the power of the light on again. And move it around so we can see how it affects the, the preview render. We can, of course, resize the light and see how this affects the lighting in the scene. That's all for this video. And my advice is to go on the Otoy website and there you can access both the uh, standalone version manual and the Lito plugin specific documentation where you can find really uh, any information you may need.